Hey guys, this is Frozen Things. Steve is here, and welcome back to another video. Um, I'm sure you've seen and you like my top 10 most anticipated movies on 2024 list. And yeah, there is certainly a hell lot of movies I'm excited for. But of course, there will always be movies that I am not excited for. Yep, uh, thankfully 2024 uh, doesn't have uh, much movies that I am not anticipating, that I have, I have low expectations for. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely have my five all enough for me to do this video. My top five least anticipated, mo at least anticipated movies of 2024. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Without further ado, if you want to know what my least anticipated movies of 2024 are, then just keep watching. But first, let's start off with the two dishonorable mentions. And my two dishonorable mentions are Smile 2. I enjoyed the first Smile movie. I actually think it was pretty decent. But did we ask for a sequel? This is, a, is the definition of an unnecessary sequel. And Smile shall just stay its own film. I mean, I don't even know if people act, even remember that, that, that Smile exists. And my other dishonorable mention is Orion and the Dark. This is a movie that um, I'm, excited, I'm not excited for that everyone else is. How the hell are people playing this in their most anticipated movies of the year list? If you're excited for this one, good for you, but I just don't get it. Not a fan of the trailer, and the animation looks like garbage. So yeah. At number five, uh, Saving Bikini Bottom, the Sandy Cheeks movie. Oh boy. This could have been a movie that I would anticipate. Because let's be real here. Um, I, I'm a huge Sandy Cheeks fan. Sandy Cheeks is my favorite SpongeBob character ever. Yeah, I love Sandy. Not only is she adorable, but I just love her personality. She's like probably the most unique uh, character in SpongeBob. I love how smart she is. She seems like a, a better friend to SpongeBob than, uh, than Patrick. Yeah, I just love how friendly she is. I don't think any other SpongeBob character treats SpongeBob as a friend more than Sandy. And I love how badass she is. And not to mention, she has the most intriguing uh, character character arc or whatever, character um, development out of all the special characters because she's a character, a critter from Texas who came all the way to Bikini Bottom. So I, I, I would actually be down for a Sandy Cheeks uh, spinoff. I would love to see how, how Sandy went from Texas to Bikini Bottom. But unfortunately, that is not the movie we're getting with a spin-off and it just comes off as a cash grab as a cash grab um, and yeah um, but yeah you wanna know what the plot synopsis of this film is? yup I'll tell you when Bikini Bottom is suddenly scooped out of the ocean Sandy Cheeks and Spongebob journey to Sandy's home of Texas where they meet Sandy's family and must save Bikini Bottom from the hands of an evil CEO Really? This looks like a filler uh, story. This sounds like a Yeah, and that, that plot synopsis alone is what uh, made this movie land on my least anticipated movies of 2024 list. Like, like we could have just gotten another origin story. I mean, I like, I will say that I like that, that we're going to be meeting, learning about Sandy's family and learning about her culture in Texas and all that stuff. And we guys, we guys see Texas, but, but I mean, first of all, why do you need to bring Spongebob uh, in, into this? Why, can we just get a spin-off without Spongebob himself? Like, re like, like, really? And also, um, also, yeah, th this movie is going to include this evil, gen generic evil CEO plot that no one's going to care about. I don't know why they're even doing this. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would have been, I wish I was excited for this one, but I just wish that Nickelodeon knew what they were doing. What to do with a Sandy Cheek spinoff? Uh, at number four, Mufasa, The Lion King. Oh, uh, yeah. You all know how I feel about The Lion King 2019. Like, barely anyone I know likes this film. There are a few people say that, oh, who defends it, but I don't know anyone who, anyone close to me who defends The Lion King. Most, of, most the majority of them say it sucks. Like, like, and they all hate it uh, with a passion. Now, yes, um. Now, yes, uh, this movie is directed by uh, Barry Jenkins, who directed Moonlight, a bit, which is a bit overrated, but I still liked it. I still like Moonlight. Uh, Moonlight. 
Um, why did I say Moon Knight? Uh, and it is going to be different from uh, the original uh, Lion King, the Lion King remake. It's not going to be a shot for shot remake. Uh, yeah, the Lion King 2019 being a shot for shot remake is one, is one of the main reasons why that movie sucked. Uh, so I acknowledge that. But let's see over here. This is an obvious cash grab. The only reason this movie was made is because um, the first, the Lion King 2019 made a billion dollars at the box office and it is considered and it is one of the highest grossing movies of all time why i mean i mean also highest grossing anime movie of all time i ass yeah frozen 2 still takes the cake and i'm happy with that i don't acknowledge liking the remake as animated i don't care anyone else says so anyone else says but seriously i don't care about a mufasa origin story obviously it's gonna be that obviously it's gonna be it's gonna have a predictable story. You can already predict what, what the story is going to be about. Oh, uh, Mufasa becomes, you know, M- you know, Mufasa as a young cop, Mufasa will, will definitely be the same. It's going to be a rehash of Simba where, you know, his father teaches him to, um, teaches him about, about King so Mufasa disobeys, but then his father scolds him and all that stuff. And then, uh, and then also he got Scar, and, and I bet, um, Scar is also going to want to be king of, uh, Pride Rock, but, uh, they choose Mufasa over Scar, and so Scar gets jealous, and so and so uh, Scar uh, and so a rivalry between Mufasa and Scar starts, and and yada yada. Yeah, I can already predict that that's gonna be the plot of the movie. And let's not forget the emotionless lions, where they're just gonna look, where their face is gonna look like absolute wood. Yes, yeah, seriously, that was one of the reasons why the Lion King did not need a remake in the first place because it's. Because we're going to be looking at these expressionless uh, lions, yeah. So yeah, <coughs> sorry about that. So yeah, this one, I don't care, yeah. At number three, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Tall. Yep, guys, there is a sequel to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> yeah, sure, the, the, the original film ma- made money at the box office, it's, but it's mainly because of the cheap budget, but and I would say that this will probably be better than, the, better than its predecessor due to uh, the budget being higher. So maybe a CGI could look a little better and maybe they'll try to make it a little more tolerable. But uh, I mean, that does not mean the movie will be good. It's clearly gonna suck. This movie is obviously going to suck. Why? I mean, it's a freaking Winnie the Pooh um, slasher movie. Like the first film, I mean, almost everyone, I can see why majority put that as the, their worst movie of the year. I, I'm not, I don't hate the idea of making Pooh a killer, but at least, but that film just took itself way too seriously. And I doubt that, that this, this, this will improve because this is made by a, a, a meaningless, uh, cheap budget studio that doesn't even know what they're doing. I don't even know the studio name and I don't even want to care, bother ca- caring about it. Yeah, and also just like with Mufasa and the Lion King, I can already predict what this film is going to be about, what the story is going to be about. It's gonna be about Christopher Robin grieving for the loss of his, uh, the loss of his uh, girlfriend, and so yeah, he's gonna find a way to get revenge on Pooh. Um, uh, uh, Pooh, he, he's gonna like fight Pooh, um, fight against Pooh, uh, the piglet, and also more of the the uh, um, the friends of um, you know uh, Tigger will be there, Kanga, Roo, like all that stuff. Yeah, Christopher Robin is going to fight them, and then the it, it ends with them getting. Christopher Robin actually winning it and, and they get defeated. Yeah, I can tell that's gonna be the plot. And yeah, yeah, I don't care. Moving on. At number two, the Little Witch Stitch live action remake. Oh my goodness. Why? Like, yeah, out of out of all the, the two Disney live action remakes uh, coming out to. Uh, coming out next year i am certainly drained this more than mufasa the lion king um you don't know why um because at least with mufasa lion king i i feel like there, there could be some redeeming qualities in the movie there could be some redeemable aspects to it and yeah but little is this on your other hand this is i can tell this is gonna be um an irredeemable disaster and this is gonna be one of the worst live action rings for sure for sure, um, like really, I'm already disliking this cast. It, it, like, why uh, do we need this? Uh, like, do we need this? And also, this movie came out. This is too soon of a movie. This came out. Uh, yeah, this came out back in. Um, that little stitch came out like 
20 years ago, 22 technically as of now. So uh, why um, remake a little in Stitch? And yeah, and also not to mention, this is going straight to Disney Plus. If when this if this movie go is going to straight to Disney Plus, you all know you're expecting a disaster because let's be real here, these uh, straight to Disney Plus uh, Disney live action remakes are pretty much uh, the epitome of them all. Yeah, they're probably the worst. Uh, yeah, they're probably the worst uh, live action remakes. Yeah, like Ro Robert Zemeckis' Pinocchio remake. Uh, Robert Zemeckis' Pinocchio remake. Um, Pierre Pan and Wendy. Um, Mulan 2020. Those are my three least favorite Disney live action remakes. And they all went straight to Disney+. Plus. So yeah, that just shows. So yeah, yeah, that, I have no hope for, for any Disney live action remake that goes straight to Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and Little Stitch, if it goes straight to Disney Plus, yo, it, it's already a fail. It, it, it's already a fail. And also, is Jordan Chu still uh, directing this movie? I don't know. On their box, it, it says that uh, Dean Fleischer Camp is directing this, but I remember hearing that it was going to be John M. Chu who's going gonna, gonna, gonna to direct this remake. And yeah, if it is, then if John M. Chu is directing this movie, then I'm only going to be excited for one thing. Uh, it's a two review in the highest leading up to this one. And it could have been my number one if it wasn't for one. And yes, this is my least anticipated live action movie of the year because the number one is animated. And my number one least anticipated movie of 2024 is, is it obvious, Despicable Me 4. Oh, what the hell, Illumination? Why are you doing this? Uh, yeah. It was obvious from the start that this is going to be my least anticipated movie of, of the year. Because let's be real here. Who asked for this? Why do we need this movie? Like, the, you're literally... Yeah, I mean, you're making this a, a bigger cash grab than the Ice Age films. I mean, I mean, seriously, how are people still looking forward to this movie? I totally accept your opinion if you are. But seriously, how are people actually looking forward to this movie? Like... Haven't we had enough of these Despicable Me movies? Like, I certainly had enough of them. Like, seriously. Um, and yeah, Illumination was doing fine this year. I mean, doing fine this year. I mean, the Super Mario Bros. movie was a banger, but it's because of Nintendo. But but uh, it was because of Nintendo. I, I, I know Nintendo is the reason why Mario is a banger. And, uh, and um, also, it's because... And also... Yeah, I saw Migration. I don't feel like reviewing it, but I'll just say Migration is mid. I will, I will share, give a more detailed thoughts on Migration when I do my animated 2023 movie ranking, which I don't know when. And yeah, um, yeah, seriously, I, yeah, it just pisses me off that Illumination won't let go of these minion movies. So, like, this is already worse than Ice Age. I mean, considering you have two. Minion spin-offs and now this, yeah. This makes Ice Age look less of a cash grab franchise. This makes it more forgiving to the Ice Age franchise, yeah. More for the Ice Age franchise, yeah. Like, this is obviously gonna uh, just uh, get your cash. Uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. I, I, there is no way in hell this movie is gonna surprise me whatsoever. In fact, this is a high chance of being the worst this big movie, me movie. Yeah, I'm going that far. So yeah, this uh, movie, I, yeah, seriously, this is a movie that really should have been made. Oh, and one more thing, I saw a photo, I saw a photo of, um, of the um, big buff minions, the giant mega minions and stuff. They're like this big buff, and I gotta say, blah, blah. yeah, that's my reaction. So yeah, I have nothing else to say, I don't care anyone else says. You can, you can call me biased all you want, but that doesn't change the fact. So by the way, sorry for the loud noise. Uh, sorry for the loud music, by the way, yeah. But yeah, you can uh, call me out all you want, but you cannot change my mind. This Pick Up Me Me 4 is my number one least time this made movie of 2024. Ooh. So yeah, that's all for my least time this made movies of 2024 list. What is your least anticipated movie of the year? I bet I bet most of you are gonna say Blood and Honey 2, and I get that. Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, 
and stay tuned for my review on Spirited Away as I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be reviewing us uh, that movie uh, leading up to Boy in a Hair. So yeah, bye guys.